Men can be very good fathers, but very bad husbands. Men can be very good pastors, but very bad husbands. Men can be very good CEOs, very good workers, very good managers, but very bad husbands. The way to work on that is to ensure that your loyalty is to your wife. When you give a woman something, she can incubate it and just birth something great. Give her a seed. What will she do? She'll give you a baby. Women have been given some incubation power. They can take something small and really multiply it. Even that pain that you have, she can really give you comfort. Hi guys, how are you doing? Of course, this is Decoding the Process, where we talk about relationships. And I am your host, Martha, and of course, I'm joined with an amazing guest. We have had him here before, and of course, he shared so much, so much that we needed another part two. We couldn't just, you know, um, do everything within one segment. We needed another part to really get to be able to exhaust this in a in a better way. So thank you so much, Ernest. Karibu sana. For the sake of those who maybe still haven't met you before, you can introduce yourself. All right. Thank you. Thank you again for having me, Martha. My name is Anes Wamboe. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm a husband. I've been married for the past 10 years to my wife, Waturi. We've got two children, Tandy and Ivana. Uh, they are ages five and three, turning six and four this year. And uh, I run a ministry called the Relationship Center, where we do a number of things. We run a men's pornography addiction recovery program called Powerhouse. We run a premarital class. We run a singles forum called Boy Meets Girl. And we run some online ministries, a podcast called the Relationship Center Podcast, and a one-winning blog called penstrokes.co.ke. And I'm also an author of a number of books, and I'm glad to be here. Wow. I, I am always wowed by his introduction mm -hmm. because of the detail, you know, in, in very um, um, subsequent, how do I even put it? Very fast, short, precise. Mm -hmm. I mean... On the proper ages. <laughs> I, <laughs> this was so unique. I mean, seeing even the ages, and again, you're so precise with even how they how they are turning yeah. this year. <laughs> so that's amazing because they, they say men are not up to task with numbers and dates and yeah. everything. So it's a good thing. It's yes, a good thing. So thank you. We are continuing with what we. It's, it's an extension of what we started before, and of course, we were speaking about um, what it really means to love. That is generally. The other segment so for now we are going to be discussing the role of a man especially in terms of loving they, they feel like love is and emotions are all maybe dispensed to a woman and mm -hmm. maybe not men i feel like men also have emotions mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when they're watching football, like, you know, they love yes. they, you know so i feel men also have emotions mm -hmm. only that they, they they have different ways of expressing mm -hmm. it compared to women so we want to really understand what is what it is to actually love mm. as a man mm. and and of course the role they play mm. in terms of steering this mm. relationship mm. because um and they have been given the mm, mandate to lead mm. which i feel is not a uh, is not something to really um take for uh take lightly mm. because it's, it's very very instrumental for leadership in mm. any place for any success of anything mm. so you can take it up from there. All right. So um, I think we'll pick it up from what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you just look at marriage in totality, God gives husbands or men two things to do. He tells them, lead your wife, love your wife. Lead your wife, love your, love your wife. Get that right, and you're doing God's will. Mm -hmm. He tells women, uh, submit to your husband, respect your husband. Submit to your husband, respect your husband. Get that going. And you'll get it going and, 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 and you'll be doing God's will, all right? So what does it mean for us as men, for us as husbands? What does it mean for us to love our wives and to lead them? Let me start perhaps by leading. One of the most important things that a husband must do must be to offer the spiritual nourishment to his wife. If you read the book of Ephesians chapter 5, one of the things that it says, it says, Husbands, um, wash your wives with the water of the word. What does that mean? Is that you take the word of God, you read it, all right? You study it, you let it change you, you let it have an impact on you, you let it improve who you are, yes. and you get the spiritual strength to offer that same sanctification mm. to your wife. Mm. And so a husband must be a spiritual so leader. So in short, like what you're saying, mm -hmm. let me cut you short. Yes, it's all right. Um... Because they're thinking pastors should be doing this. <laughs> That's a big mistake. <laughs> yeah. I That's a like big mistake. Starts at home. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. one, one, one of the failures of the modern local church mm -hmm. is to relegate the role of bringing up children mm -hmm. 
to the local church. Mm. That is a role for the family. The local church is meant to equip the saints for the work of ministry and then disperse them out like couriers yeah. going out into the world to do the will of God. We are not meant to be discipled primarily by the church. Yeah. Discipleship must happen at home. at home. And who must lead it? The husbands. But nowadays, the work that husbands ought to do has been taken up by Sunday school teachers. And that's why, I mean, you end up finding wives respecting their pastors. No? Exactly. Because the main need they have... That to role, the, the pastor is basically playing the role of a husband. Husband, which you know? they would really find it, yeah. you know, lovely if their husbands actually perform that. Husbands must play that role. There is no way about it. And and we as Christian men must understand, must seek the gap. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you this, huh? My wife must be nourished spiritually by me. If for one reason or one another, or for one reason or another, we cannot go to church. Mm-hmm. Maybe we are sick. Maybe something has happened. Maybe there's a lockdown, COVID nineteen. It should not be a tragedy for my family. My wife should say, ah, it's okay. There is a spiritual leader in the home. Mm-hmm. Ernest, teach us the word of God. And yeah. Ernest will teach them the word of God. Mm-hmm. And Ernest will teach the children the word of God. Mm-hmm. My church should never be afraid that for that time when my family is mm-hmm. unable to come to church, that they have lost anything. Mm-hmm. They should be confident they have gained what is a spiritual leader in the home. Mm-hmm. This is one of the ways that God requires you to express leadership in that home. So the you primary to, source is the husband. It actually. must be the husband. Because uh, I feel like um, uh, something has come to my mind, which mm-hmm. I feel is very important. Mm-hmm. For instance, how the COVID season came. Mm-hmm. Many places shut down apart from the family. Mm-hmm. Meaning is the strongest unit to actually find yeah. so many things. Yes. And it can never be shut down. No one you can't shut down the family. So <laughs> if if that's why families broke. Yeah. Because so many things they were getting that need to be provided from the family they were getting from outside. Exactly. So they end up finding there's nothing they really get from home, mm. frustrated and in the end doesn't function and they break. And even look at the first marriage between Adam and Eve. Genesis 2.15 says, The Lord God created the man, he put him in the garden of Eden to till it and take care of it. Verse 16 says, Then the Lord God said to the man, You may eat of every tree of the garden of Eden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you may not eat of it. Verse 17. When the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. This command is given to Adam. And at that time, Eve has not yet been created. Adam is given this command as an individual. Eve comes much later, after Adam names the animals, after Adam realizes there's not a meat suitable for him, he's put into a deep sleep, then the rib is removed, and then out of the rib, a woman is fashioned. Someone, would, someone once asked me, Ernest, don't you think it would have provided better spiritual security for this command to be given to both Adam and Eve when they were both there? Adam and Eve, listen, you may not eat, but that command was given to Adam. And it's as if there's an implicit instruction for Adam to teach his wife. Mm. For Adam to pass on that instruction to his wife, the man is a spiritual leader. You must take up the reins. You cannot lead a home if you're spiritually inept, if you don't have a thriving work with God. Yeah. And that is why it is it is draining. There's some women who say, oh, but Ernest, you know, um, you know, I, I disciple my children. Some women take up that role and say, I disciple my children. I do that role. I, 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 I raise them up spiritually. And it's good because as a woman, you must help. The Bible calls a woman a helper. But you must understand you can't lead it. That leading is given to the man, okay? And no matter how much you try, you can help your children. Of course, you can pray for them. And of course, you'll have an impact. But the impact of it coming from their father is powerful. Because one, God introduces himself to us as a father. Mm. And the first impact of fatherhood are our earthly fathers. If our earthly fathers demonstrate that leadership, then it is easy to connect with our heavenly father. But when our earthly fathers are lacking that strong leadership element, that spiritual leadership element, you find that we struggle to relate with our, with, our, with our Heavenly Father because we conflate those two fatherhoods together. And yet, they are not necessarily the same. But, earthly fathers should strive to be like their father in heaven and give that to their children, give that to their families. Yeah. I want a prayerful wife. The wife is the one who should be waking up. <laughs> that's the norm. Actually, oh, people say that a lot. Big mistake. And you know, big many mistake. men are doing that. Actually, you, the product that you are woman, you should be waking up at 4 a.m. Mm. I can fall back in my bed. <laughs> mm. And of course, it's the work of the woman to actually pray. And it's becoming a very accepted norm. It, 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 it's, it's antithetical to God's will. Mm. It is antithetical to God's will. The man, in fact, when Paul the Apostle was so bold to actually say, the head of Christ is God. Mm. And, the head of, and, and Christ is the head of the man. Mm. And the man is the head of the woman. Mm. He said that in the Bible. 
you know he's, he was basically given the rank you know that god pours out his grace through jesus christ who pours it out to the husband who pours it out to the wife and the children and so when you revert when you invert that role you stand against god's model men must lead spiritually all right secondly men must love all right and uh, i'll give you an acronym that we look at uh, this is from uh, um Emerson Egerich, he's written a book called Love and Respect. Mm-hmm. And he says, uh, this is how love is spelled out to a woman. When the Bible says, husbands love your wives, he says you can be identified as a couple, okay? C-O-U-P-L-E, okay? And C is closeness, O is openness, U is understanding, P is, um, what, what is P? P is peacemaking, all right? L is, um, um, L is, what, what was L? P is peacemaking, L is skip my mind. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, oh yes, loyalty and esteem. Loyalty, uh, loyalty and esteem, esteem. You know, um, uh, 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 loyalty and esteem. So closeness, openness, understanding, uh, peacemaking, loyalty and esteem. You know, when you have those things uh, in 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 a relationship, expanded from a man to a woman. Okay, the woman feels loved. And maybe if you have time, we can go through each of them one by one. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, we should. <laughs> <laughs> so we will, of course. Um, we can just finish up on this, and then maybe mm. we would re- really delve deeper into into that. Mm. It's, it's interesting. So now, how? Let me let me just um ask this now as uh, as a helper. Mm. Of course, how do I come in? Because um, being in this relationship and of course envisioning marriage, mm. um, the man is a spiritual leader, mm. of course, and he is the main um um. um supplier of spiritual needs mm. in that home mm. but again I f- um how how does the woman because mm. um i feel it's not solely um on the man mm. how do you help each other and still allow the man mm. to perform his role all right so the converse in ephesians 5 is to the woman is told to respect her husband mm. to submit her to respect her husband and uh in the book love and respect uh Emerson Egerich uh, gives the acronym now f- for the men it's given couple you know and for the women uh, to how to respect the husband and how to submit to the husband and how to support the husband is given the acronym CHAIRS C H A I R S okay so C is conquest you know recognize his desire to work and recognize his his place as um as a provider in that family okay H is hierarchy uh, recognize his desire to protect and to provide for the family. Mm. A is authority. Acknowledge his desire to lead and even his position to lead. You know, I is insight. You know, appreciate his advice and his ideas as far as how the marriage should run or how the home should run. You know, R is relationship. I appreciate his desire for friendship and his desire for closeness with you. Then S is uh, sexuality. And this is for those who are married. You know, appreciate his desire for sexual fulfillment in that marriage and beat them. And so women ought to look out for those areas. You know, um, am I recognizing that this is a man who wants to work and who wants to offer something in his family? And do I recognize that? Hierarchy. Do I recognize that he wants to protect and he wants to offer that kind of protection? Do I acknowledge it when he offers protection? That man will feel respected. He'll feel supported. Authority. Do I acknowledge that he is the leader? Do I acknowledge that he has a desire to lead and he has a mandate from God to lead? You know. And then insight. Do I understand that? Um, you know, they say women have a sixth sense. You know, uh, women normally say, you know, there's that sixth sense that we women have, you men don't have. You know, at times women say that, you know, they say we've got that sixth sense, you know, you should trust a woman's sixth sense. Now, listen, men also have a type of discernment that is often underrated and it's called insight. Men have got a particular insight that they can speak into matters that women may not necessarily have. Now, women have got an intuition. Okay, the discernment of women is called intuition. Right, and it's very special. A woman can tell you she just doesn't trust that person. Uh, a wife can tell you she doesn't trust that person. She shouldn't do business with him, and she may not even have concrete reasons why. Mm. But that intuition that God has put inside of her, and she find out that the discernment was right. Mm. For the men, it's insight, and for the men, the insight comes through logically analyzing information. They can look at a ton of information, and they can process a lot of information, arrange those ideas, and then give you advice. That advice is necessary. That advice can actually save your marriage. And so you when you recognize that as a woman, you really, really support him. You really, really help him. And then there's relationship. Men want relationship. You know, just like you're saying now, uh, you know, uh, men only show emotion in a football game. Not true. 
<laughs> not true you you just uh, love a man really well and you he, you'll see him smiling uh in sheepish ways that he's yeah, not smiled true. before men are they, there's no such thing as a non emotional human being yes. those are robots you know every human being has got an emotional side the difference between women and men is that women process life emotionally first men process life logically first emotionally later it does not mean that they don't have emotions it's just that the emotions tend to check in later okay after the the logical processing and then finally sexuality for women who are married you must understand that a man's sexual need fulfilled is a big deal when you meet his sexual needs as a wife when you attend to him and actually find and, and, and actually meet him at a place where he's satisfied where he's not uh, he's not hungry or he's not uh, starving sexually he feels respected he feels loved he feels comforted that is one way we, that, that, those those are the ways in which a woman can really support and respect her husband in the home yeah mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So much again. Mm. So much again. So yeah. guys, you have mm. had it this far. I mean, keep on taking notes. We are coming back right after this short break mm. to continue from there. Welcome back. We are taking it off again. And of course, we have been discussing a few things. We have talked about leadership and how to love. We want to, of course, delve deeper into how a woman feels loved and how a man should and would effectively love a woman. So, mm. Yeah, nice to be back, uh, Martha. So um, we looked at how the women uh, should respect their husbands mm. and how they should offer support to their husbands. What is the converse for the men? So we began by saying that men are called to lead and love. And you saw what leading looked like, being the spiritual authority. What does loving look like? And we are borrowing this from uh, Emerson Egerich's book where he says uh, loving involves uh, the acronym couple, C-O-U-P-L-E, closeness, openness, understanding, peacemaking, loyalty, and esteem. Let's look at all those just in detail and just see what it means to love a woman. So one, closeness. We had mentioned this in last week's episode that... Um, a woman deserves emotional closeness okay that is a core need for a woman women want to know that their husbands are not emotionally distant from them now husbands need to understand that women see you being emotionally close elsewhere they see you being emotionally close to your boys when you're watching that football match they see you you know they see you get so excited and hug that guy and tears come to your eyes and go like, I can't believe we made it to the finals. <laughs> they see that emotion. And guess what? They want that same emotion in their marriage. And so it's difficult when a woman wants to have that level of emotion with her husband, but the husband only limits it to basic information. Mm. You know, how's your day good? You don't provide an opportunity for closeness, but conversation, okay? gives that opportunity for you to be emotionally close okay and so husbands must really train themselves to speak all right and the 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 one of the dangers um not only really, i don't know how to, how to call this um before a man gets married um they say that a man looks at marriage as the end of a long marathon he says, I've been pursuing this woman, I've been loving her, I've been wanting her, I've been showing her affection. Ooh, now we've gotten married, we've crossed the finish line. The marathon is over. Yes. I'm done. Yeah. Women view marriage as the beginning of a marathon. They say, at dating, courting, ratio, all that, that was warm up. Yes. Now let the real marathon begin. And so what happens when women get married, they, they sprint off. You know, and women, newly married women are the best women. I'll just say that. You know, a newly married woman, that's the best, that's the best woman, that's the best woman. That's, a, a woman will never love you <laughs> as much as when she's newly married. She'll give herself emotionally, she'll give herself sexually, she'll give herself fully. Why? Because she's sprinted off, the marathon has begun. You know, and so you find newly married women really putting in a lot of effort in their marriages. You know, they want to, you know, they have got a new place. You know, they want to take photos. They want to create new memories. Mm -hmm. Men slow down because for them, the marathon has come to an end. Mm -hmm. And women see that disparity. They wonder, how come we're not going out on dates? Mm -hmm. Newly married women want to go out on dates a lot. Mm -hmm. But the married man is like, but we are married. This whole <laughs> house is a long date. We are <laughs> and so because of that, women feel that there's a lack of closeness. Mm -hmm. 
you know and at times men enjoy that full attention that newly married women give give because newly married women go all out but with time some newly married women can get resentful because they feel like why am i doing all this and he's not close to me we're not going out on dates he doesn't even want to date why i'm telling him let's yeah, dress up on dates it's like women are going to yes exactly you know yeah. they, 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 there's an event a friend of yours getting married hmm. the newly married woman will be like let's you know especially here in africa you know uh, let's get a kitenge to shoneshe hmm. you know let's go match the man will be like ah, why why are we doing this <laughs> you don't understand that it is her need for closeness hmm. one of the best things you can do as a man is when you get married understand that she views marriage as the beginning of a marathon mm-hmm. run with her run with her all right and so conversation and just being agreeable to those activities that bring you emotionally close dates agree on them closeness okay that's why you love a woman openness women don't just desire men to talk to them they desire men to be open you know i talk to bed and i hear them it's funny how men can go through tough times and they can talk to someone else but not their wives a man can lose his job and he can spend two hours talking with his friend tell my gosh i was fed tell his friend details my boss walked in he said this can you believe i i was framed can you, oh but he'll give all the intensity to his friend when he comes to tell his wife ha ah, babe i lost my job what happened ah you know that job has always frustrated me i'm glad it's over so okay, god will bring another one <laughs> that's it and the woman is like come on be open mm. open up open up and this i i don't know what causes men especially husbands to just do that where you find you can be really open with 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 with, with your boy but not as open with your wife you know your wife is your first priority it is more dangerous if this man is open with another woman mm. that, that's the recipe for an affair mm. okay husbands must know that women desire openness mm. tell them how you feel Tell them our culture does not permit a man to demonstrate weakness vulnerability <laughs> yeah, yeah those tears just suck them up you know tears are tears are for the shower you cry when you're showering you know so you conf- you confuse people you know you you're not crying you're just showering you know no maji me kuingia kwa macho you know you have to be open with your wife If, if if you don't if you, if you don't demonstrate this openness to your wife who do you demonstrate it to uh, some pe- men are afraid that if my wife sees me crying then she'll think I'm a, I'm a weak person mm. you know and so that's what the culture tells us you know you'll be weak and if you're weak she'll not respect you mm. a woman will feel really really loved when you're open with her and you'll be surprised at the wealth of wisdom women have women when you give a woman something she can incubate it and just bath something great give her a seed what will she do she'll give you a baby give her you give 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 a woman that's 5000 shillings you'll be surprised what she can do with 5000 shillings she can expand it give her 1000 shillings she can do so much women have been given some incubation power they can take something small and really multiply it even that pain that you have she can really give you comfort women can really comfort their husbands and many husbands deny themselves some 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 level of comfort that their wives can give them because they're not open with them Okay? so many to be open all right then you understand it women desire understanding from their husbands they desire husbands to understand uh to understand them uh, especially when these are there's a disagreement okay many times uh, the woman may even be on the wrong you know but she just wants her husband to understand that uh, she meant well okay you see when men have a misunderstanding they look at the facts and they go like okay you are wrong i was right so i'm sorry it's over for women it's not enough when a woman hears she's wrong uh, at times there's another voice that she hears in the back of her mind not only is she wrong she's a bad person <laughs> you know she she hears she's an enemy in that marriage okay what understanding does it says yes fine i understand you made a mistake but i want you to know that i do not determine your character i do not determine your fate i do not crucify you for this particular misunderstanding so women want to know that their husbands understand that yes mistakes have been made but they they're close to one another you know and even if the mistake was let's say the mistake was out, out of malice the woman is out of malice you know she deserves reconciliation understanding involves the husband saying yes what you did was wrong but um let's come together we are not friends one of the we we are still friends one of the worst things that a man can do to a woman is to stonewall her 
yeah. to just go quiet. To go Same, quiet. We don't want more fighting. Yeah. So they ah, just I'm done. Slide. I'm done. You know? Yeah. And and that that kills a woman. You are you're killing her, you know? Mm-hmm. One of the things you can do, even if you need that personal space, because some men so say, you know, I need that, that time off. You can just tell her, hey, uh, listen, right now I really need some time alone, but I want you to know I still love you. I want you to know you're the love of my life. I want you to know I would choose no one else but you. Mm-hmm. I just need time off. That woman feels understood. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So women yeah, want... Like you say, I think understanding is just um, affirming. Yes. Even if yeah. at that point you still don't feel like... Yeah, because women hit emotional, emotional distance, distance. Okay? So yeah. when, 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 you, when you need that time off, okay, just ask for it. But before you ask for it, it's a farmer. Let us know. You're the girl of my dreams. I'm still not letting you go. Okay? We are still together. She will give you the time that you need. Yeah. <laughs> she will give you the time that you need and she won't keep following you. No, why are you running away? We need to talk about this now. No, no, no. You know, but just affirm her and ask for that space. She'll give it to you. Okay? Then pee peacemaking. Okay? Women want their husbands to resolve issues with them. Women don't want issues to remain in the backlog. They don't want something. And, and this is very driven in conflict, you know. It is not conflict that destroys relationships. It is not conflict that destroys marriages. It is unresolved conflict. When conflict is put in the back and said, oh, we'll talk about it later. Oh, man, that, that really destroys a relationship. And so women want resolution. Yeah. Okay, Women want their husbands to come together and say, you know what? Let's solve it. Let's come to a let's come to a solution together. Let there be peace. As we come for a solution, let us not attack one another. Let us let, let us work towards a mutual solution. When you do that, you love that woman. Okay? And then loyalty. Women want to know that their husbands are devoted to them and them alone. You know? And so if if you go for an event, you know, uh, with your husband, Martha, and your and your husband, you know, um just maybe compliments your sister or another friend and says, oh, wow, you look really nice. And the last time you had that from your husband <laughs> was in the year 1900. <laughs> you know, it'd be like, where is your loyalty? You know? And it's not that you have a problem per se with that. You wonder, where is the devotion at home before the devotion out there? Let me tell you, men can be very good, very good sons to their parents, but very bad husbands. Men can be very good fathers, but very bad husbands. Men can be very good pastors, but very bad husbands. Men can be very good CEOs, very good workers, very good managers, but very bad husbands. The way to work on that is to ensure that your loyalty is to your wife. One of the ways uh, I just tell husbands, okay, be home on time. You, you, you tell something to your, to your wife that she's a priority and that you're loyal to her. When you constantly come home late, you tell you implicitly tell your wife that you're loyal to your boss. Your boss comes first. Your wife must feel like a priority. You know, your children don't understand that you're making money for them. Your children don't understand that you are making all this money to give them this future. Yeah. You know, uh, someone once told me this, you know, if a, if a child lacks a father figure because the father is out selling drugs and drinking, you know, that child will go to school and they may meet, maybe they may meet my daughter, you know. And they say, hey, Tandy, I wish I had a dad like you. Me, my dad is always out drinking. He's never home for us. And then Tandy responds, ah, don't even wish you had a dad like me. Me, my dad is always out preaching. <laughs> you see, whether you're out drinking or preaching, if you're not at home, yeah. you're not at home. <laughs> you get presence mm. is very important. Presence communicates loyalty, mm. and women need that. And the husbands must know that you must be available. Yeah. You must be available. And not only must you be available, you must demonstrate loyalty. There must be a priority. Your woman must actually see that, by the way, she's not one among many women. She's the only woman. Mm. You know? She's the only woman among many. She's above 10,000. All right? Yeah. And then finally... It actually fi- reminded me... Yes. Um, Yes. Shortly on a, on a very small story, mm. I had, mm. I think I had on Red on newspaper, mm. when somebody was complaining why the children now don't come to visit him. Then one of the kids told him, mm. now he was trying to actually write a story to the new generation, mm. investing presents. Yes. He, he said, I gave them money. They mm. used to call me, maybe when they're in school and I'm abroad, and uh, I tell them, what do you want? I'm not, how are you? Mm. So now I'm old and they're telling me, what do you want? What do you want, exactly. When I want their presents, most they have refused yeah, to Yeah, I'm busy, Dad. What do you want? <laughs> when they see Dad's call, 
the first thing, some of them, even if they maybe missed the call, they will first send money because they are all well off and they know yeah. if dad calls, then we must be just giving something to him. So the same language you spoke yes. to them, they begin speaking it's back true. at you when your time actually yeah. comes. Yeah. yeah, it's true. You're very right. You're very right. Mm-hmm. And then finally, E is esteem. Mm-hmm. Ah, you'll be surprised at how um, your wife may be a born again Christian, walking with God, loving the Lord, mm-hmm. but she needs you to esteem her. Uh, this world is constantly telling women how they should look, how they should dress, how they should how they should act. This world tells women, if you're not this size, you're not beautiful. If you're not this skin color, you're not beautiful. If you don't have, you know, if you are, if your bra size is not this size, you're not beautiful. If you're and women are under so much pressure comparing their lives to celebrities, yeah. comparing their lives to people around them, and and, and and pornography is one of the leading contributors to that kind of 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 of, of destruction, you know, that commodifies women and reduces them to objects. God wants women to be esteemed because women are made in his image. Mm. All right. Uh, we live in a world where women um I, I have daughters, you know, and so I tend to hear the stories, you know, of women being harassed in town. Women, you know, uh, you know, they walk in town, they can't be safe, they are sexually harassed, they are touched, they are what the world is constantly doing this to women, you know. What must husbands do at home? Women must know the world may be harsh, but here at home I am esteemed. Here at home, I am held in high regard. Mm. Here at home, I am beautiful for who I am. Here at home, I am a person of value. Here at home, I am held in high regard. Here at home, I'm celebrated. You know, I'm celebrated. Here at home, a woman should feel that. And that is how a man should also contribute in loving a woman. So, couple, closeness, openness, understanding, peacemaking, loyalty, esteem. Because one thing you have mentioned in the last point that I really you know, I have reflected on shortly was, of course, if you don't speak to a woman, something else will speak to her. Of course. If, and you'll be wondering why she's coming home with so many ideas mm. and she doesn't have your ideas. You haven't listened to her. Mm. And that's why I feel like um, um, the devil never went to the man. Mm. She knew the easier, yes. the easier target is a woman. The woman. And to date, actually, the many marriages, are mostly the entry point of the world. Yeah. Because yeah. we are the weaker beings like the, yeah, the that's, that's Bible says, yeah. And that's usually the target. Even 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 the target of many cults mm. and many prosperity gospel churches and many uh uh just say cults in general, mm. they target women, you know, because they know that if these women are not being given what but I don't be given a level of love and attention by their husbands. Mm-hmm. There's something else that they can be given. Eve's great deception was thinking that she could be superior to her husband yeah. and superior to God. Mm-hmm. You know, she thought, I have found something that makes me better than God. It's the great deception of Eve. And so husbands, Adam should have been there to confront the snake. And in fact, the Bible says the wife, the woman gave the fruit to her husband who was with her? Go read Genesis 3. Mm. It's interesting. Who was with her? You would think Adam was on the other side of Eden doing his work. Mm. Then he was told, well, Adam, eat this fruit. Yeah, do you know that the forbidden fruit? Like, what? No. Adam was right there with you. He saw the snake cheating, cheating her. He saw the snake deceiving her. He was quiet. He should have stood yes. there. He should have offered a couple. He should have done all that he could. He should have resisted that snake. He should have reminded his wife. He should have led Reminded her, wash her with the water of the word. Tell her, remember the command I told you that God gave me. Mm. He should have done all that. He would have protected his wife. He would have loved his wife. And would have been in a utopia world. Who knows? But that world is coming. Jesus yeah, Christ coming. died. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's coming. coming. Yeah. Oh, so I mean, yeah. Not be quiet. Yeah. Speak to this woman. Because mm. of course, our weakness is the hearing. Mm. <laughs> Whatever we hear, we can easily get confused. Yes. From yeah. what really comes through this. You know, yeah. Ears. The windows of the soul for the women are primarily the ear. Yes. The windows of the soul for the men are primarily the, the eyes. eyes. Men are visual, women are auditory. Yeah. 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 Wow. 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 So. Let me just allow you to give conclusive remarks yeah. as we conclude because, I mean, mm. time is gone yeah. and we should do this. Maybe, right. maybe one day we can do a live one, yeah. actually, <laughs> yeah. where people are there. So you can have one, two hours. Mm. So, yeah. you know, of course, when people pay for tickets, mm. <laughs> they want to money for it. So. Yes. Wow, so. Yeah, so I'll just conclude by saying um, we as Christians should avoid the gender war. Uh, the world wants to pit men against women, women against men, and to compete. 
to say that men will not love women until women respect men and women will not respect men until men love women. Listen, we are not opposites. We are not opposites so that we can fight one another. We are opposites so that we can complement one another. We are not opposites to compete. We are opposites to complement. And when you complement one another, you really enjoy relationships with the opposite sex. God bless you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And I really want to say the same. I mean, the 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 the, the you know the true and um real or rather the fullness of what God wanted us to experience mm. in both man and mm. woman. That is when we can experience the fullness of God, mm. the image of God, even mm. in the family, because you know, when women are raising children on their own, they are raising emotional children. Mm. And God needed both man and yes. woman so that they can have some logic logistics beyond mm. the emotions mm. that can bring forth you know a balanced society so guys do mm. not um be against each other we need each other so much we are not aware of we mm. do need each other most mm. importantly we need god and i'm sure you've learned a lot from this segment i mm. believe you are not only learning because the beauty of knowledge is applying what you learn Otherwise, we wish you well, and we um we we are glad to always uh, have you on Mema TV every Tuesday at nine forty five pm. Me as your host, and of course, bringing you amazing content. Thank you, and have a blessed day.